parallel universes have crossed over from sci-fi movies to the domain of science, with specialists such as famous physicist Stephen Hawking developing theories on the matter. However, some of these theories are conflicting and they may quickly become confused, especially because someone with a stake in the space race such as Elon Musk has something to say regarding the possibility of parallel universes. This video shows Elon Musk explaining Stephen Hawking's scary multiverse theory, where it may be frightening or unpleasant to consider. Experts believe there are many examples of almost anything out there. This is the central concept of the multiverse theory. Before we get into what Stephen Hawking and Elon Musk have stated on the subject, let's go over what the multiverse is all about. According to the multiverse theory, our world, which consists of billions of planets, stars and galaxies and spans tens of billions of light years, may not be the only one that exists in practice. There might be an exact replica of you somewhere in the world that is the same age, size, weight and has all of your other characteristics. To make matters more intriguing, there may be two, three, or an infinite number of copies of you floating around. Only your imagination limits the number of replicas of yourself. From this perspective, the universe is an all-encompassing entity that contains all of our realities, galaxies, solar systems, stars, planets, humans, animals, plants, compound molecules, atoms, protons, and electrons. According to multiverse theory, our reality is simply a small part of a vast collection of universes. This implies that there may be another world that is completely different from ours, with even more perplexing natural principles. There may be an endless number of such universes, each of which differs from the others and contains millions of celestial bodies and even sentient life forms. The notion of the multiverse evolved from a widely recognized theory, the inflation theory. It was developed in 1980 to fill in certain information gaps left by the Big Bang theory. So, how does the Big Bang fit into this? According to the Big Bang Theory, a large explosion and explosions produce chaos, yet the cosmos includes a wonderful hierarchy of planets, stars, galaxy, and galaxy clusters. The inflation theory is sometimes seen as an extension of the Big Bang Theory, implying that the cosmos, which was as little as an atom at that time, grew to cosmic proportion in a fraction of a second. It went through a period of fast expansion and grew to an enormous size. Simply put, the cosmos grew very quickly. This fast growth halted around 13.8 billion years ago, just when the Big Bang occurred. However, this may only apply to our universe. Many cosmologists believe that fast inflation does not terminate everywhere at the same time. While our universe's expansion halted 13.8 billion years ago, inflation may have continued and may currently be ongoing in other locations, resulting in the creation of a multitude of other universes. This would result in endless inflation, which would generate an ocean of individual universes. In this case, each universe will be able to develop its own set of rules for how it works, like different physical forces, natural events, and basic concept values. However, the multiverse theory is not without controversy. Others say it's just an intriguing proposition produced by science fiction. By detecting aberrations in electromagnetic radiation left behind from an early period of the cosmos, scientists are attempting to unearth proof of the existence of many universes. Certain sorts of black holes can also reveal information about the existence of the multiverse. The concept of numerous worlds is so fascinating that it has appeared in philosophy, music, literature, science fiction, and even religion. Because of the universality of this concept, these other worlds are known by several names such as parallel universes, alternative universes, parallel realities, quantum realities, alternative realities, and others. Hawking discussed the multiverse theory before his death, shedding light on a continuous issue. In fact, it was the subject of Hawking's final work, which he prepared in partnership with the professor Thomas Hertog of KU Leuven and was published in the Journal of High Energy Physics. Based on string theory, the theory predicts that the universe is finite and significantly simpler than many existing theories concerning the Big Bang. Professor Hertog, whose research has been backed by the European Research Council, originally unveiled a new theory in July 2017 at a meeting at the University of Cambridge commemorating Professor Hawking's 75th birthday. Meanwhile, even before this research, Hawking made some remarks concerning the universe's multiplicity in a 2017 interview. 
The standard theory of everlasting inflation, according to Hawking, predicts that our universe is like an endless fractal with a mosaic of distinct pocket worlds, separated by an inflating ocean. Hawking and his colleagues showed in their paper that the local laws of physics and chemistry might alter from one pocket universe to the next, forming a multiverse. According to Hawking and her talk, this concept of everlasting inflation as a theory of the Big Bang is incorrect. The difficulty with the traditional view of eternal inflation, they claim, is that it assumes an existing background universe that evolves according to Einstein's theory of general relativity and sees quantum phenomena as minor fluctuations surrounding it. However, they believe that the dynamics of everlasting inflation eliminate the distinction between classical and quantum physics. As a result, Einstein's theory fails in internal inflation. According to Hawking, we expect that our universe on the biggest scales is pretty smooth and globally finite. Thus, it is not a fractal structure. Hawking and Hertog use this holographic notion to project the time dimension and everlasting inflation. They were able to depict perpetual inflation without relying on Einstein's theory as a result of this. In their new theory, everlasting inflation is simplified to a timeless condition, specified at the beginning of time, on a spatial surface. According to Hertog, as we follow the history of our universe backward in time, we eventually arrive at the threshold of endless inflation when our familiar concept of time ceases to have any relevance. Hawking's previous no-boundary theory predicted that if you go back in time to the beginning of the universe, it shrinks and closes in like a sphere. Nonetheless, this novel theory departs from previous studies. Hertog and Hawking utilized their new theory to make more accurate predictions about the universe's overall structure. They projected that the cosmos that emerges from eternal inflation on the past boundary will be small and significantly simpler than the endless fractal structure envisaged by the previous eternal inflation theory. If their findings are validated by more research, they will have far-reaching ramifications for the multiverse concept. We are not down to a single unique world, but our findings suggest that the multiverse has been significantly reduced to a considerably smaller spectrum of conceivable universes. According to Hawking, this makes a theory more predictive and testable. With Hawking gone, it is now up to Hertog to carry on the task. Meanwhile, Musk has come intriguing thoughts on the multiverse theory. He believes we're all locked in a simulated matrix experience. He mentioned this in a podcast session with Joe Rogeron, with whom he occasionally hangs out. Musk says that the universe is 13.8 billion years old, which means that any civilizations that may have grown up in other parts of the universe have had plenty of time to improve their technology. If we assume any improvement rate, then games will be indistinguishable from reality or civilization will collapse. Elon Musk stated, implying that only one or two possibilities exist. Because we exist, we are most likely in a simulation. I think most likely this is just about probability," he continued. There are many, many simulations. They may be just as easily be called reality of the multiverse. Musk believes that the substrate or whatever is fueling the simulations is probably more dull than the simulation itself. He bases on our video gaming experience. Most gamers enjoy them because they are more entertaining than reality. People who have never participated in combat, for example, like playing war games. The same is true for raising games, who would do ripping down highways and destroying their automobiles with reckless abandon since they are unable to do it in real life. So, if we are in a simulation, we probably have a more fascinating experience than the people in charge of the game. Keep it in mind the next time you're bored. Meanwhile, keep in mind that Musk and Roger drank whiskey throughout the event. Also, the comic lit up a joint and took a whiff. Marijuana is legal in California, where the program was recorded. The difficulty with the multiverse theory, however, is that there is no foolproof means to test for the existence of a multitude of worlds, at least not yet. That is our video for today. We hope you like it. So what do you think about Elon Musk's explanation of Stephen Hawking's verifying multiverse theory? Share all of your thoughts with us in the comment section below. Well, that's all for now. This is Big Tech Media. See you again tomorrow. Keep in mind to like, share, and subscribe.